morning, Impact. Welcome in. My name is Donovan. I'm pumped to be worshiping with you guys this morning or evening, or if you're watching this in the middle of the night and you're in the in your car or something, uh, wherever you're at, let's just uh, let's just enter into a time of worship and bring glory to God, worshiping in His truth. Let's do it. that we can't control. 
or even things that we think we can control, but what we'll sing about here is it's not who we say we are, but rather who he says that we are. We'll sing this together. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all oh, his love for me. Yes, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed. Oh, his grace runs. While I a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I. Please for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. So glad that you could join us again for our virtual services. 
And no matter where you're at today, uh, be it your home, be it your house party, be it someone else's house party, uh, be it at work or all by yourself, uh, I'm glad that you're here because this makes us the church. It's why we gather. Um, and again, it's it's a reminder that uh, we don't go to church. We are the church. And, and I appreciate you taking the time to do this with us every week. Man, I cannot believe that it's been over three months since we've been able to gather on our campus. And, and it's just amazing the season that it, we're in and all the challenges we face. And, and yet, because we're the church, we're meeting some real needs. So thank you for your generosity. Thanks for being generous to the church. It allows us, not, again, the, the campus is one thing to take care of, but it's the real needs of people that we're meeting as a church. And so, again, because of your generosity, we've been helping single moms and single dads and, and, and families in needs uh, with uh, great things like uh, rent assistance and, and uh, uh, keeping the lights on and, and keeping the water running and, and uh, supplying groceries and things like that. And so please don't, don't stop giving. In fact, increase. Be generous as possible because it allows us to be the church, to show that we're a community that cares for each other. And so uh, in that regard, thank you for giving and uh, keep it up. Uh, one of the things that allows us to be the church uniquely is why we do communion. Uh, communion is all about uh, being the church. When Jesus says where two or three gather, I'm there also. And anytime we can gather, it doesn't make us the church. It's only when Jesus is at the center of it do we become the church and do we exercise his presence or we realize his presence in the midst of who we are. And so again, I thank you that you're here. And uh, as we go into this time of communion, it was always centered around a meal. And in fact, the early church, they celebrated well. In fact, it was a big party they threw. And uh, because of that, uh, they lost sight of really what the church was all about. In fact, Paul had to write about that and correct them because there was some who were eating too much and some who were drinking too much and, and uh, it was out of control party. And so Paul comes along and he reminds them that it's not who, what you do, it's who's there with you that matters. And it's all about Jesus. And so he instructed them to put Jesus back at the center and to make it about him and remind uh, each other um, about what Jesus is doing in the midst of them. And uh, when we do this, uh, again, I, I encourage you, take some bread and, and take some wine or juice and remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Remember the sacrifice that he did on the cross by giving his body and pouring his blood out that allowed us to reconcile ourselves with God and, and from that point forward to be able to live the celebrative life that God wants for us, to meet needs and, and to be empowered by the Spirit of God to meet those needs. And so thank you. In fact, let me encourage you this morning um, or maybe it's the afternoon for you or wherever it is, uh, whatever time of day it is, uh, gather around at the table and don't just take the nip and sip like we do on the weekend. Man, take a loaf of bread, take a bottle of wine or your favorite juice and go after what it means for you to be the church. What ways that God is expressing himself through your community, uh, how you can be the church in your community better. Um, talk about those things over a meal the way the early church did. And when we do that, man, we are exercising the ra reality of being the church in tangible ways. So thanks for, again, joining us. And, and man, let me pray before we go into this time of communion. Father in heaven, I thank you that we are allowed to be your church, that God, you've asked us to represent you. And so Lord, I, I pray that we represent you well, whether it's on uh, work or in our communities or online, God, that we are representing who you are and the sacrifice you made. So thank you for that sacrifice. Thanks for dying on the cross for us and the cost that you paid so that we didn't have to. And in that, Lord, uh, because you already paid the cost, God, I pray that we as your church can live out the life that you want for us. Live it out in a way that makes a big difference in this world, uh, an eternal difference. And so, Lord, in this time, as we discuss being the church around your table, around the meal that you supplied for us, God, I pray that you would join us in our conversations. Remind us again about who you are and what you desire to do through us. Uh, God, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, enjoy your time together.
surrounding me Let it break At your name still Call the sea to still The rage in me to still Every wave At your name Jesus, Jesus you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. these bones to call these lungs to sing The shadows can't deny Your name cannot be overcome Your name is a lie Forever lifted high Your name cannot be overcome Jesus, Jesus Darkness trembles, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Sing your name. For your name is a lie that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a lie forever. Cannot be overcome. Come on. Your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light forever lifted high. Your name cannot.
darkness tremble in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship Here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Mending every heart, I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. See, you are way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 that is Sometimes we get so caught up in our everyday life that it's hard to see the ways that God's moving. So I hope that as we sing this truth together, that we believe that even when we don't see it, we know that He's working. We trust that He's working. We lean into that truth. Come on, listen. stop, never stop working, never stop, you never stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working, 
Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't feel that you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, come on Even when I don't see that you're working even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, cause that is who you are. 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 this morning that you are the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper. You are the light in the darkness. Whatever that darkness looks like in this world, even when we can't see anything around us, God, you light our way. You light our path. We trust in you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in peace. You guys have a great week. Greetings, Impact. Um, man, just want to welcome you um, wherever you're at watching this online. Uh, if you're just an individual hanging out, uh, comfy on your couch, which sounds really awesome. Um, if you're in a small group, if you're in a house party, uh, just welcome. Um, we're going to get right into it, and I'm going to start us off with prayer. Um, Holy Spirit, I just act that, ask that you... Um, just guide my heart as I bring your word, the truths from your word. God, I pray that I would get out of the way. Um, any preconceived notions I have or just notions of how this should go, Father, I submit those to you. I surrender those to you. This is important stuff we're going to look at today. And God, I pray that it would challenge our hearts and challenge our hearts in a way that we would be more like you, Jesus. Man, we love you so much. You're so good to us. Help us to always recognize that. Um, Man, Holy Spirit, just illuminate the scriptures to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, kind of a, I think it can be a challenging topic because it's been a challenging topic for me, but a really great topic. So I, I hope what comes out of this is um, a lot of thinking and praying about where you're at personally uh, with God and um, just kind of take an assessment of your heart and, and where it is with Jesus. So uh, the first uh, verses we're going to look at are in Revelation chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. So just take a couple minutes. Um, well, I hope it doesn't take you too, too long, but just open up your Bibles to Revelation 2, uh, verses 2 through 5. Um, this is a chapter that... Um, John writes about the church at Ephesus. And the church at Ephesus is the church um, that Paul writes to in Ephesians. And if you look at the, just kind of a little history, the church at Ephesus, Paul writes this uh, great epistle to them to encourage them of what the, their faith should look like. Um, yeah, it, it's not so much of a chastisement or telling them they're doing something wrong. Uh, Ephesians is really encouraging them and showing them, man, this is what it's going to look like. This is how much God loves you. Um, there's some amazing prayers, and there's just some really good things. I think that's important to remember. Uh, in Revelation 2, this is about the church at Ephesus. Okay, I'm going to read it starting at verse 2. Uh, the angel Jesus says, I know all that you've done for me. You have worked hard and persevered. I know that you don't tolerate evil. You have tested those who claim to be apostles and prove they are not, for they were imposters. 
I also know how you have bravely endured trials and persecutions because of my name. Yet you have not become discouraged. I'm just going to stop right there. We're going to get to verse 4 and verse 5. So when you hear that, what do you think of? I mean, that's a list of some pretty awesome things that this church is doing. So just think of the church, the body and impact, your own life. Um, that would be a, a pretty cool list if, if Jesus came and said, man, you guys are doing this. And, and so it says, man, you've worked hard and persevered. So these guys are not lazy in their faith. They're working hard. They're persevering at what God has called them to do. The, now the, the next one is, I know you don't tolerate evil. Right? We serve a righteous, holy God. And he's saying this church, you don't tolerate evil. That's a good thing. Okay, it says, you have tested those who claim to be apostles and prove they are not, for they were imposters. And throughout the New Testament, there's multiple places where that is part of our job, right? If people come in the name of Jesus, we test what they say. We test, we listen, we compare that with the scriptures. And then we can see, man, are they legit? Or are they false? And what he's saying here is, man, you guys were diligent, you tested, and you found that they were imposters. So another great thing, right? Um, it says, I also know how you have bravely endured trials and persecutions because of my name. So these aren't just uh, hiccups in life that are really tough. This is specific to you. He's saying, I know that you have bravely endured trials and persecutions in my name. So directly because of Jesus, you have gone through trials and persecutions. And I love this part. Yet you have not become discouraged. So I don't know about you, but that's a, that, that sounds like an awesome church. It sounds like they're doing everything right. I mean, think about that. You've endured bravely persecutions, trials. Think about your own life. Think about the church and impact. Have you guys bravely endured these trials, right? And not become discouraged. If you have, awesome, right? So again, this is just a list of these amazing things that this church is doing. And then we get to verses four and five. But I have this against you. So listen, church, this is important. This is for us. But I have this against you. You have abandoned the passionate love you had for me at the beginning. Let that sink in. He lists all these amazing things this church is doing. And then he says, but I have this against you. You have abandoned the passionate love you had at me at the beginning. Some translations uh, reference, um, you abandoned your first love. It says, think how far you have fallen. This is verse five. Think how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works of love you did at first. I don't know about you, but that hits me pretty hard. Here's a church who, who by all practical means is what we'd say, maybe sometimes killing it. They're doing a great job. Right? He lists all these things they've endured. They're, they're not lazy. They work hard. And then it comes to this. But I have this against you. You've abandoned the passionate love you had at me from the beginning. So what does that mean, church? What does that mean when we get that but? You've abandoned the passionate love you had for me at the beginning. What does that mean? That means it doesn't matter if you are, if you are working hard for Jesus, if you are at impact day and night, if you serve in the student ministries, if you teach, you're on the prayer team, right on and on, ushers, security, you clean up, list goes on and on. You do all that faithfully. It doesn't matter if you've abandoned the passionate love you had for Jesus at first. So that's what we're talking about today. The love that you have, that I have for Jesus. That is what this is about. That is what our journey is about. And man, we can get caught up in all these other things. But church, this is to be encouraging because it's, it's pretty amazing what God does through this. So the cool thing is this is a warning. This is a, hey, hey, this is what's going on. So what does he say? He says, repent. So this is a big deal. This isn't a, hey, just get this right. You know, come on, just get back to me. Love me more. No, no, no. He's saying repent. So church, if you've abandoned your first love, if you've abandoned that first passionate love you have for Jesus, first thing you got to do is repent. What does that mean? Jesus, I'm sorry. 
take some time. Take some time in your own heart, in your own life. Say, I'm sorry. You know, I really think I have lost that first, like that passionate love that I'm supposed to have for you. And I love it. it says, repent. And then what? Do the works of love you did at first. We know this is all about love. Uh, God is love, John 4, 24. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So love is the key. If you are being just, man, going at it and doing everything well, if you don't have that love for Jesus, your first thing, um, you got to stop. You got to repent. You got to get right. This is a big deal. So um, we're going to take some time uh, to assess, right? So, so a question I have for you is, is simple. Are you in love with Jesus? Yeah, so if you're, in a, if you're in a small group, house party, individually, whatever, right now, you can hit pause. But I want you to think about that. I want you to ask yourself the question individually and if you're in a group, as a group. Are you in love with Jesus? Here's a tough question. Are you in love with church? Or are you in love with getting up in front of the church and singing? Are you in love with serving more than you're in love with Jesus? Are you in love with kids and the children's ministry more than you are with Jesus? Now, are those things bad? No, we are supposed to love each other. But what do we do first? We love God first. We love Jesus first. So man, that first passionate love that you have for Jesus, right? I just picture that when, when you get saved, when you realize you're a sinner and you realize how much God loves you and that he sent Jesus to die for you. It just blows you away with that love. I know the first time I really experienced the love of God wrap around me, it was, it was undeniable and it was something amazing. Often I have to go back to that moment to be reminded of the radical, reckless, relentless love of Jesus. Because that's what this is all about. The love that you have for Jesus will drive everything in your life. Okay. Now, I love this part because it's, look, take, take an assessment. Okay, take an assessment. Um, if your heart's not right and Jesus isn't number one and your love for him isn't number one, um, then... You got to get right. You got to repent. This isn't just, man, I'm going to change it. Repent. Start with that heart that says, God, help me on this. Okay. I also want to look at Jeremiah 29, 13. I believe these verses tie. This is in the Old Testament, right? And, and the first verses we looked at a revelation, the last book in the Bible. But we get to Jeremiah 29, 13. This verse says, you will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all of your heart. That's when we find Jesus. All of our hearts. Right? So the first thing we kind of looked at in Revelation, it's uh, one of the main points that you can look at on the YouVersion app is being busy for Jesus does not equate to loving Jesus. Okay? Loving Jesus should be the center of who we are and what we do. And you know, the cool thing is that I've learned in, in my walk with Christ is that we can be simple. We can be so simple in our prayers and say, man, Jesus, show me how to love you more. Show me how to love you more. And then Jeremiah 29, 13, the second main point that we have, um, and you can see it again on the U version app is we cannot do this half-hearted. This says you'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Church, we cannot do this half-hearted. We cannot go in and say, man, Jesus, you can have a part of me. You can have a part of me on Sundays. You can have a part of me on days that I'm serving. That is not what our Savior deserves. That is not what he wants. That's not what he calls us to do. Church, you got to be in 100%. And, 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 and some of you right now, I, can, I, I know in your spirit, you hear that and you're like, oh man, that's a lot. Or I don't want to hear this again. But I say this to encourage you because when you're, when you're in it 100%, when you seek and find Jesus with all your heart, it's amazing. It's nothing. I can't even describe it right now. Okay. So it's got to be all in and you can ask, man, help me, help me with that. What does that look like with all of my heart? I'm just going to read it. Uh, some of this to you. So again, this is in Luke chapter 10. It says that and it's starting in verse 38. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But there's that word again, right? But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him. She went up to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. 
So I love this. This is very specific. The scripture says that, that she was distracted with much serving. Church, take those words to heart right there. She was distracted with much serving. Is serving bad or wrong? No, we're called to serve. And we're called to serve um, with all our hearts. But she was distracted with serving. She even asked Jesus, man, tell my sister to help me. What is going on? Right? And it says, but Jesus answered, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. What is Jesus, what is Jesus telling Mary and Martha? He's telling Martha that Mary has chosen the good portion. She's sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him teach. So church, I want you just to, to, to really pray over this, not just today, but this week. Are you distracted with serving? Are you distracted with life? I know it's busy and we're, we're living in strange times, but we don't have to worry about that. Jesus is on the throne. It doesn't matter what is thrown at us. He is Lord and he loves you. That is the whole point of this. He loves you so much. He pursues you. God sent his only son, Jesus, to take your place on the cross, bear your sins, pay the price for your sins, took your place, took my place, rose from the grave. You put your faith in that, your life will, will never be the same. And then once you're on that journey, take heed to these warnings. Are you losing that first love you had for Jesus? I pray that you have him, but if you have, repent and get right with God today. And, and again, I know this is sometimes like, man, repent, get right, I don't wanna hear that. But I, w I don't want you to focus on that part. We have to do that if you're not in the right place. But I want you to focus on falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus again. And let me just pray real quick over that. Holy Spirit, I pray right now that, that all the, whoever's listening to this, God, that their heart would just be quiet before you, that they can hear you speak to them. God, I pray in my own heart, I pray in your church, God, that we'd be quick to repent if we've, if we've lost that first love for you. Help us just to love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So church, I wanna leave you with these, just this final thought and encourage you. It seems simple sometimes. Um, but keep Jesus number one. Keep your love for him number one. Um, if you want to love your wife or love your husband better, love Jesus more. If you want to have more patience with your children and, and learn to love them more, love Jesus more. Become more like Jesus. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the source of everything. So whatever priorities you have, Jesus has to be right here, right? Number one, the top. It's got to be right here. So church man, I love you. Um, Seriously, give that some thought this week. All right.